Uh, Evans and Winston, I guess we can start with Alan's resignation because that's the news that we broke uh, earlier today. Uh, Evans, I'd like to get your thoughts on that. Yeah, I mean, it's no surprise. It's been coming. It was rumored in the past, and the team around Alan came to deny that he had not resigned. Um, I am pretty certain that this is something he had contemplated to do before, but the timing wasn't right. But the timing is right now. Um, this is January. You have to do it early because this is the same year in which nominations are open. In the last quarter of this year, the party will open nominations and the primaries will be held. And so you want to start early. You don't want um, any hindrances, any obstacles in your path because you are a minister and you can no longer be overt campaigning. Now you don't have time anymore. If you want to do it, this is the time to do it. And so I'm not surprised that he's done it now. Um, I believe it's the right time for him to do it. Mm. He's now resigned. He can focus exclusively on his ambitions to be president. Mm. Do you think the Food and Agriculture Minister, Dr. Usufiye Akoto, would follow in the steps of Alan? He better does. I mean, all of them, um, who anybody else we don't know about who's still in government, should do so now. Uh, at the beginning of the year is the right time to do it. It's been coming for a while now because we are in a crisis. We are in an unprecedented crisis, the biggest crisis of our generation. We don't want people at the helm who have divided attentions. This is a time for um, single-mindedness in trying to fix the challenges, the tremendous challenges that this country faces for the ordinary millions and millions of ordinary people who are struggling. And all the predictions show 2023 will be a far more difficult, challenging year than 2022. So you don't really want an agric minister, a trades and industry minister, very critical uh, positions, cabinet positions, in a job that they're not 100% committed to in a time of crisis. So yes, the agric minister should go. Um, before the end of this month, if they don't go, if he and the others who we don't know about, and, and I'm saying that deliberately because politics is like that. There are people who may be nursing the ambitions that we haven't heard of, and they may just jump in the race. Mm. So the Greek minister and whoever else is in there, in government, if even not as a minister, but in another capacity in government, appointed position, who's, who's, who's been nurturing a desire to run for president, should resign and leave. But here's the thing, though. It comes down to the president. The president should not, should not allow them to determine when they go. The president should insist, hand me a resignation now before the end of this month so I can appoint somebody else there. He needs it himself. He needs it so he can fix the crisis that we are in. He, he cannot afford to have people in there who are, who, who are, who are divided in their attentions to, to the job. You know, it's interesting you say that, Evans, uh, because we understand that when Alan uh, said to the president that it was time for him to leave, uh, the president was not so excited. And, you know, sources even say that he had attempted to do so in the past and the president disagreed with him. Uh, but crucially, you also talk about the fact that these are positions that in a crisis, you don't need people who cannot commit 100%. But the vice president also wants to be president, and he is in government. Yes, the, the vice president is slightly different. He is a vice president. Um, it's not a position that it, it's it's so amenable to resignation. It is it is constitutional. It is a constitutional provision uh, uh, position. He is always the president in waiting. Think about that for a second, because anytime the president isn't there, he acts as president. Uh, so there's, there's a whole constitutional architecture around the vice president's position that makes it slightly more difficult for him to, to resign um, and focus on his presidential ambitions. So that, for me, is going to be a challenge. Um, you have to go back to 2000 
when uh, Professor Mills, you know, um, of course, then the vice president was brought in, he, he ran his campaign. It was a different time. I mean, again, I understand the question in the context of this unprecedented economic crisis that we're in. But the vice president is a completely different position to, to, the, to the others um, in that uh, his, his is a bit more, you know, regulated position. Yes, it's not, it's not impossible to, to resign, but I, I still think he can stay in there. Um, uh, the, the thing is that it's, I, again, I have to, it comes back to the president himself, um, how he hand, acknowledging that he cannot lose Dr. Baumia. Um, now, because obviously of the challenges that we are in, in, in that position as a vice president who has been supporting him and the chair of the economic management team. However, you you would have to allow him to focus on, on, on that and, and find other means of managing. Um, the, in, in, listen, the vice president's position is largely a ceremonial one. Read a constitution. The vice president is at the mercy of the president. It is what the president tells him to do that he does. He doesn't move if the president says don't move. He, it, it is a ceremonial position. Yes, it's, it's constitutional, but it's really down to what the president says you do. So it comes on to the president. He, he can easily still campaign. Really, if you look at the fourth republic, this vice president is the only vice president that has been taxed with the law, has been giving an exclusive portfolio to manage. I mean, apart from the being the ceremonial head of the economic management team, in terms of project executions, he's been the most taxed, the most, um, in terms of vice presidents we've had, the, mo the, the, the one vice president who has been given the most responsibility. Yes, we know that in the last couple of years, that responsibility, many have suggested that had waned because he's been cut out and isolated the bit. But still, if you look at his digitalization agenda that he's driven, we haven't seen the likes of that in the Fourth Republic where a, a vice president has so much responsibility. Um, so the president had given him a bit of a leeway to operate. But if you read the constitution, clearly, this is a position that really it's up to the, you, you operate at the president's pleasure. Not so if you're a minister. A minister, you are, you, you take decisions and you operate by yourself. You go to cabinet. Of course, the president has the ultimate uh, say on this when you go to cabinet. But you, 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 it's like your deputies in the ministerial position. The deputies operate at the pleasure of the minister. If the minister says move, you move. But when you're a substantive minister and the cabinet minister at that, you, you have far more in, in, individual agency in taking decisions, in implementing policy, etc. Then when you have president, then when you have vice president, where you really, the president says, ceremonially represents me, then you do. Ask all the vice presidents in the Republic. You read um, the, fourth, the, the, the John Muhammad's book, you get that impression clearly that you, you work if the president says work, you stay redundant if the president, that's what the president believes you should do. So he, he can stay. He, what I'm, but my point I'm making is that if you have a minister and a vice president, one, the the, the urgency and the need to, to focus exclusively mm. on one thing, in this mm. case, the presidential ambition is greater in the, right. in the case of a, of, a, of a minister than in the case of a vice president. Because obviously in the vice president position, as I've explained, right. the president has a bit more uh, desire to move you around. Mm. I'll come to one thing. I'm not sure he entirely agrees with you on that analysis uh, the, with the vice president position. But if you're just joining us, uh, the head of our political desk and his deputy, Evans and Winston, are analyzing uh, the fact that Alan Chiramating uh, has tended in his resign resignation. That's the news uh, that we're getting this morning from the government. So he's no longer a part of the government. Effective last night, we understand. However... Uh, we also do understand that he's been given a bit of time uh, to wrap up and hand over. Uh, so he is still a uh, trades minister, but it won't be for long. Uh, and there's also the talk about the possible reason why he's uh, resigning. But obviously, we know that he has presidential ambitions. Uh, we're talking about the vice president who is still in office, who is also interested in being uh, president and Evans has just finished his analysis on why he doesn't think that 
a minister and a vice president, those positions are the same. So if you're a minister in this administration, particularly a cabinet minister, and you want to be president, then it's appropriate for you to resign, but it's not same for the vice president. Do you agree? Well, I mean, uh, you, you, you don't have evidence in this uh, Fourth Republic of a vice president resigning to pursue presidential ambition. Um, al Haji Aliou Mahama, when he wanted to be the flag bearer of the NPP, he stayed on as vice president, uh, went into the election third uh, behind Akufado and Alan Sherman Ting. So, um, and so on that basis, you probably would say that uh, when you're vice president, you went into the election with um, you know the president. Now, in, in political circles, we've always talked about the fact that the president and the vice president are the only two guaranteed positions when a party is going into an election. Mm. They are the only two guaranteed positions when a party is going into an election because you must uh, contest the election with a presidential candidate and a running mate. Okay? Right. Now, you two are going to uh, fill forms with the Electoral Commission, even though you'd have only the presidential candidate's picture on the ballot box, uh, on the ballot paper, mm -hmm. the vice president would have been known at the time the president is filing his nomination to contest the election. So uh, these are the two guaranteed positions should a party come into government. And based on that, you know, the, uh, the vice president has to go through. So he can resign, but it's not something you see always happening. Right. There's been the question of what that <clears throat> would mean in an election of this nature. Because would the vice president, for instance, use his personal resources in campaigning, or he would use state resources in campaigning, for instance? We have seen in the American elections, for instance, that when pr the president is engaged in personal campaign, when he uses the Air Force One, he has to make payment to the state. However, some presidents have actually arranged such that he has an official meeting, gets into the official meeting, and could still take advantage and have certain private meetings as a result when you're in a campaign period. But in the West, they will try as much as possible to you know, keep that incumbency advantage and say if you are on a private campaign, you'd have to use your own resources. Unfortunately, I am not sure that would happen here. Um, if the vice president goes anywhere here and, you know, he's visiting a place for the, I mean, a, a commissioning of a project or the cutting of a sword of a, for a project, he will go there in his capacity as vice president. If he goes there as uh, vice president and he meets party uh, delegates, he's campaigning. Ordinarily, you would expect that uh, the vice president would go there in his private capacity, and so he would pay for it mm. and not abuse incumbency. Right. That's some of the things you want to do away with, uh, you know. But um, so that's just by way of the vice president. The bit about uh, Alan Chamantin, whether he had tried to resign earlier. What I what I know is that um, there were some of his followers who had wanted him to resign earlier. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, in the heat of the economic crisis, they asked him to resign. His explanation at the time was that it would be the worst time for him to resign. Because if the government is going through problems and he decides to step aside, he will be giving up on his party. He will be uh, betraying his party. And so he would prefer things to stabilize and then he can bow out. So you realize that in the heat of um, the you know, economic crisis at the time when we had announced the IMF deal. Mm. He was here on our sister station, as Empire FM. He went to Good Evening Ghana. He granted some interviews talking about the fact that he had a, a confidence that the economy would get back on track and all of that. He saw that as his contribution also because at the time that became very difficult for the government to communicate. In mm. fact, he didn't get anybody from government wanting to go and speak about this whole IMF deal. Also because of what Ken had said in the past. But he said he would do it. He did those interviews. He went around, he explained it, even in the final moments of his uh, last year, you heard him talking about how the economy would do well. He told all of you his own year of 2023, a year of you know rebuilding, reconstruction, and all of that. And so that was the decision at the time, that let me wait. When things are better, then I'd resign, and then I can go and pursue my own presidential mm. ambition. Not all of his followers agreed with him, because they felt that by still remaining in office, he wasn't able to campaign. And I told you, I said earlier this morning that in politics, there are people whose successes are you know, tied to other person's success. Right. And so there are persons who believe that if Alan Chemanting becomes flag bearer of the NPP today, their political success is achieved. 
or they will be politically better politically placed with Alan Chamanting as flag bearer of the NPP. And for those persons, they kept putting the pressure on him, kept giving him pressure. Eventually, he decides to you know, tender in his resignation. He missed the president, where the president wasn't really happy about it. I had to take a lot of conversation before. Mm. Uh, you know, the president accepted that verbally, that, okay, uh, you know, he can go ahead and resign. I do not know why the president had a difficulty with it. I don't know the kinds of conversation that he had. But based on our sources from the Jubilee House, for instance, whenever he had appeared in the Jubilee House and met the president, mm. people always thought he was coming to resign. So whenever he leaves, it is, hey, why resign? And I was, oh, no, 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 no. But today, but last night when he left, uh, he left with a straight face, got into his car and left. Mm. Um, so that probably was the beginning of the suspicion mm. that maybe he had resigned at this time. And uh, they, uh, I mean, information has been confirmed that he has resigned. Right. Well, we'll, we'll but get before into... You, but before I, you get to Evans, Evans talked about, um, you know, other ministers who uh, have, may have similar ambitions. Right. So we know, for instance, that um, the food and agriculture minister has presidential ambitions. Um, none has come up for now, so we are waiting. Uh, the thing about politics is that people may have their own ways of doing things. They may mm -hmm. just uh, spring a surprise and say, I want to be president immediately. Uh, uh, you know, the, the party opens nominations. So for those persons, you can say they just may be testing the waters. Mm. Would the uh, food and agriculture minister resign? Uh, would the president ask him to resign? Well, the president can ask him to resign, uh, but he's one of the uh, president's best performing ministers. Um, if the information we're picking is anything to go by, maybe in a reshuffle, if the president gets to do one, we're told to be doing one this month. Will he? Well, we're told he'll be doing a reshuffle this month. We're told mm. anything can happen in politics, anything can change in politics overnight. You may have plans to do a reshuffle, and uh, there'll be something, someone convincing you, and you probably would change your mind. Um, J. A. Kufo did it this way. He told all those who had, uh, you know, presidential ambitions to get, I mean, uh, resign by 1st July 2007. They did eventually, 1st July 2007. The distinction at the time and now is that in the J. A. Kufo era, you saw a lot of the people going around to go and campaign. So it was affecting the job of government. This time around also, well, they may be going around campaigning, but because you don't have a lot of ministers mm. in here, you've seen the food and agri minister having his tours of the regions. He goes around the region finding out, um, you know, food security and other issues. There's a school of thought that it's a, an advantageous uh, position because there you go, you, you are, you're going in there, you're going to have a conversation with farmers and everything. But as you go around talking to farmers also, you have, uh, uh, you know, the famous uh, father for all and everything mm. posters around, which would send a signal that you want to be president. Mm. Um, that's also taking advantage of incumbency, the very thing we've been talking about and saying we shouldn't do that. But uh, it's a choice he has to make. If he doesn't make that choice, the president should be telling him to step aside. Right. Uh, just the final bits uh, on Alan, and we'll move into the analysis of uh, best performing ministers. Evans, Alan made an attempt at the leadership of the NPP 2007, 2010, 2014. Would this resignation, would it give him a, some sort of advantage into the campaign for the leadership race? Um, I doubt very much. I mean, the only advantage he gets is that he is the first to now have no other hurdles in, in, in the sense that he has now he can exclusively focus. He's the first to have the, I mean, among those so the vice in, in terms of the, the front runners in the case of the vice and are, are you ruling kennedy japan out he's got huge uh, billboards uh, all, all over we've seen no him. he's not front he, he's not a front runner um there are two front runners and then there are the your your dark horses i, I would i will put uh kennedy japan in the dark horse category um i know if you speak to the M MPP delegates, they give him a lot of credit in terms of his the the way he robs off the delegates and the grassroots of the party. So I will not discount it, but he's not a front runner. Uh, so in, come back to the question, does it give him an advantage? One advantage, the only advantage I see for him is that he now focuses quite exclusively when you compare him to the vice president, who is who the other front runner. Um, the vice president will always have the challenge of being a vice president around him. Um, struggling to try and juggle the, what Winston was talking about, um, straddle the 
questions around incumbency abuse in your campaign and, and how do you create that distinction between an official uh, assignment given to him to represent the state of functions and draw the line between that and, and campaigning for office. So that is the only advantage I see for for Alan Chamanting as the other front runner. Apart from that, I don't see any advantage coming from this this resignation. Mm. Winston? Well, I mean, I think that um, the advantage he gets now is that he can concentrate on his presidential ambition. Now, we have talked about being in government and, you know, doing this also. And as trade minister, you know, he's been leading this whole after thing, having led efforts at getting Ghana the after secretariat. One of the things that has been very, very important to him is to get Ghanaian businesses prepared to take advantage of after. We've been, when we were with uh, Daniel McCauley, we are excited that he has got a, gotten a contract even mm. with after, you know, to be able to, uh, you know, uh, engage in logistics, movement of logistics. He has two cargo, uh, you know, planes and, uh, you know, ship to be, you know, moving logistics within the African continent. Some of the things we've been talking about in after. And Alan Chamanting, as one who led all of these negotiations and bringing the Secretariat to Ghana, has been at the forefront of it, trying to make it work. And so he didn't really have time to campaign. In fact, if you speak to a lot of his uh, followers, uh, the only challenge was, why is he still there? Mm. Why is he still there? Because, you know, um, you, you see a lot of... Um, you know, next to lead, DMB, next to win, you know, and all of those BMW. things. BMW. Uh, BMW, which the Alan uh, f supporters this time say, Bamiya must wait, <laughs> and not Bamiya must win. But, you know, they, they consistently complained about how he didn't seem to be paying so much attention to his campaign and was paying attention to affairs of the state. Now that he's decided to step aside, now that he's decided to resign, you probably would say, this is it now. You are now going to see the MPP campaign. But then there's another hurdle also. Because we've seen in the past, uh, you know, attempts by the party hierarchy to probably say, hold on a minute, we're, we're, we're not engaging in any, um, you know, campaign yet, and uh, these whole groups and what have you, the flag bearer should call them to order. In fact, they indicated they were going to write to Alan Chamanting in an instance, and we've had followers of Alan Chamanting, I mean, also flagging other groups and asking the party whether the party is going to write to them also, saying that these groups are also emerging, supporting other candidates. Now that he's decided to step aside, would he openly campaign and say, I want to be flag bearer of the party? Would the party write to him again, indicating that you have to be careful? What sort of signal would the party be sending? Would the party then be seen as being partial in the handling of circumstances surrounding the flag bearer slot? This would be trying times even for the NPP itself. Mm. And that's why people, a lot of people said earlier that a party should think about having an early Congress, but that didn't need a, a, a constitutional change in any way because right. it indicates that not later than the spirit. And so you could do it earlier. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, uh, it gives him the chance to campaign now, but can he also go and do that openly? Because the party has not opened nominations. And in the past, the party has been clear. And I've said, oh, when we've not opened nominations. But if we were to go by, um, you know, the you know, then first vice chairman of the NPP, Freddie Blay, and I, and I think Evans was the one who interviewed him uh, when a lot of the executives were declaring support for Nana Kufuado. He said, some rules are better violated than adhered to. I don't know if that is going to happen this time around. And so the NPP will probably, uh, you know, turn a blind eye to some of the things that will be happening. Let me just make a point about vice presidents and their ceremonial positions. Um, when I remember the uh, Jerry Rollins regime, uh, Professor John Evans at Tamils, you know, was the um, chairman of the economic management team. Now, uh, John Evans at Tamils as the chairman of the economic management team, we all knew his background. His background, nice. uh, he was, uh, you know, a commissioner of, uh, uh, he was head of IRS before becoming vice president. And we know the roles he played even when he became vice president in the implementation of VAT and all of that. The communication may have gone wrong initially. Of course, Gabra and Co would come in and try and you know, correct it. He eventually would correct a few things. Now, following uh, from that thing, it became more of the norm for vice president to be chairman of economic management teams. Um, could you any more at the time? Yes. So uh, you, you, you saw John Mahama becoming chairman of the economic management team again when the NDC was in office. And then you have Pakwe Siemi Safa and Bama becoming chairman of the economic management team. The whole idea, I mean, of having a vice president as a chairman of the economic management team also is to get a vice president to have something to do. And in the NPP period, you've seen, for instance, the economic management team 
actually organizing town hall meetings until uh, this, you know, uh, the last one was in 2020. You haven't seen a lot of town hall meetings in 2021, 2022. Also because times itself has been very hard. And if you're having these meetings, you wouldn't have a lot to report. Because, you know, the thing about uh, town hall meetings and the thing about these meetings, when Kufo started the People's Assembly, is that you go in there to have things to, to report on, to say we have done this, we've done that. When there are challenges and you continuously would have meetings, what would you be reporting as your key success achieved over the period? So that in itself would present a bit of a problem for you. It is true also that there's been a lot of um, digitalization drive. And it must be stated that, look, the Ministry of Communication has played a major role in all of this. And I have been moderating discussions by the Ministry of Communication. Mm. And the last one that I moderated, I, mean, I, I am seed, they were actually designing Ghana's digital economic policy. So is this you disputing the, the, the facts that, and this was what Evan said, that this vice president has been given the most uh, responsibility? No, I am not disputing that. Okay. I have just told you that, um, you know, the, the, the task as a chairman of the economic management team mm. Uh, you know, start as much as I can remember. I can, you know, remember uh, the time of um, Professor John Evans Atamels as Vice President to Jerry John Rollins being the Chairman of the Economic Management Team. Right. And we've seen Vice President handling that position. Yeah. Uh, and handling those positions, one of the things they have done is to, you know, become the advisory unit of the, um, uh, you know, uh, 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 the economic advisor to the government. Akufuado, yes, uh, told all of us that he was coming into this election with Bamia because of the role Bamia played in the economy during the term of J.A. Kufo, and that's why he brought him on board. Yeah. And so you can expect that he'll be giving an opportunity to you know, do a lot of things. I do not think that his influence is waned. I think that things may not just have gone according to plan within the, within the current term. It's not a case of people not listening. It's a case of things not going well. Right. So the news is uh, Trade Minister Alan Tramanting has resigned. And we've been doing some analysis on the back of that. Evans Mensah and Winston Amor from our political desk.